Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to the channel. Today, we are going to be looking at our final pre-March Madness mock draft. This will be a lottery mock draft, and first thing first, we got to take a look at the new draft board. Alex Sar is still the number one prospect with Cody Williams at two, but Dalton Connect has moved up to number three. Zachary Reza Shea has moved up to number four. Jacoby Walter, Ron Holland taking a little bit of a slide. Then it's kind of the same, seven through about 11. Um, Devin Carter is up here. I said he was 6'8 in the last video. My mistake. He is six foot three. Isaiah Collier moving up a little bit. Got Antonio Reeves, Dylan Jones, Jalen Bridges. A lot of 3 and D guys um, right in through here, although Ryan Dunn can't really shoot the three ball. Um, but with, between Reeves, Bridges, Furphy, and then Dylan Jones, who's a really good scorer, um, you got those guys there. And then we also added a few new guys like um, Baylor Shireman, Coleman Hawkins, Naquan Tomlin, all high upside guys that have been in college for quite some time there at the end. So first things first, you know, we got the Wizards on the board. Been kind of consensus for a while now that Alex Saar is going number one overall. Uh, he seems to be the next foreign type guy that's coming over kind of like Wimby and, you know, the, the Wizards. They're terrible. Um, so Alex Sar is going to come in and completely reset this franchise with the number one overall pick. With the number two overall pick, we have the Detroit Pistons on the board. And the Pistons, their biggest weakness right now is a scoring forward. They got two, three young centers with Duran, Isaiah Stewart, James Wiseman. Although I'd look to sign a stretch four in free agency if I was them. Um, at the three, they have Azar Thompson, who's a really good defender, really long, really athletic. Um, at the two, they have Jaden Ivey. Uh, we'll see how Quentin Grimes does. And then they have Marcus Sasser and Cade Cunningham at the one. So they need a scoring forward. I think you can see where I'm going with this. The all-freshman, all-rookie, whatever you want to call him, out of the Pac-12, Cody Williams from Colorado, averaging 14, about three and a half. His brother is an absolute monster, so we'll take Cody Williams to the Pistons second overall. Now third, we have the San Antonio Spurs, and they need some shooting and probably some passing, uh, which I think we can get at eight with the Toronto pick. Um, I think that pick has to be within the top six for it to go back to, to Toronto, otherwise the Spurs get it. And so with the third overall pick, we have the Spurs here, and they're going to go out and they're going to pick up Zachary Rizache. Now, yes, you could go Dalton Connect, but... Reza Shea here, he's younger, he fits into that Wimby timeline, the Spurs are in no rush. They can swing for the fences right here with Zachary Reza Shea, and that is who they're going to take, a guy that has unlimited unlimited potential shooting the ball and defending at six foot ten. He's like Michael Porter Jr. if he came from overseas and was healthy. With the fourth overall pick, we have my Charlotte Hornets on the clock, and honestly, I don't know which one I would go with here. Dalton Connect or Jacoby Walter. Connect is, yes, more of a forward, but he is really a scoring forward, and he can shoot the absolute crap out of it. And that's what the Hornets need is another wing score, um, preferably a two, but I'm not, you know, you don't draft based off position with the fourth overall pick. There's a reason you're there. There's nobody really on that team that is that good, or else you'd be a little bit higher up in the draft. So Dalton Connect here to the Charlotte Hornets. That's who I'm going to go with first. I think he's a little bit better than Walter. Yes, he's four years older than him, but the Hornets are ready to win. Next year, we're going to be ready to win, so we're going to go ahead and draft the player that is ready to win. And again, he's only 22 years old, so it's not like he's 25. Uh, with the fifth overall pick, we have the Portland Trailblazers, and this has been a pick that you know I've done a few times, and that is Ron Holland because he has a lot of upside. Um, he and Scoot coming from that G League pipeline, and I Honestly, I like the defense. I like the scoring, uh, the slashing at least. He played a little bit of point guard for G League Ignite too, but other than that, you know, he's not really a great shooter. Anyway, we'll take him for the Portland Trail Blazers here. Uh, it doesn't show his stats, obviously, but exciting. I mean, he puts up games like 32, 9, and 5. That's very exciting. Can dunk. I mean, well, obviously can dunk, but can rock the rim. 6'7", almost 200 pounds, so he's going to – fit right in there. They've got a lot of young guards in Portland. Uh, he kind of fits into that hybrid four spot that can defend and can really slash and score. Now at number six, we have the Memphis Grizzlies, and this is a team that, you know, they need to go best player available as well. Um, usually if connects here, I like this, but they get job back. Desmond Bain will still be there. They'll still have Vince, Zaire, Luke Kennard, um, Marcus Smart. They'll have Gigi Jackson, who's really started to come on. Uh, 
Blake, uh, Brandon Clark will be back next year, Jaron Jackson Jr. So best player available here for them. And I think that's going to be Jacoby Walter, who can really shoot it at six foot five, 200 pounds. He can shoot. He can defend a little bit. Coming from Baylor, obviously, usually a really, really good defensive team. Not quite as good this year, but still generally a really good defensive team. So Jacoby Walter with the sixth overall pick to the Memphis Grizzlies. Now with the seventh overall pick, we have the Houston Rockets, another team that is in that position that they can go best player available, and it won't really hurt them just due to the fact that they have a great young core. We'll see what they do in the offseason with Jalen Green, who has been somewhat disappointing, but Amin Thompson looks like the point guard of the future. Fred Van Vliet, the point guard for now. You know, he'll be gone before long. Um, at the two, they still got Jalen Green. We'll see what happens, like we said, but Dylan Brooks. They got Cam Whitmore, who's really been playing well. Um, in the front court, they're set with Steven Adams and Alpern Singoon. And then, you know, they got to, uh, Tari Eason, Andrew Bart Smith Jr., both really athletic um, and can play defense on the other end of the ball. Same thing with the men, same thing with um, Cam Whitmore, Dylan Brooks. So I think their front court is set. And honestly, I'm going to have them go out and get another score. We're going best player available here, and that is Rob Dillingham. Uh, 15 points, 4 assists, 3 rebounds at Kentucky this year. He's been pretty efficient for a 19-year-old. And I think, hey, if you want to move on from Jalen Green, Rob Dillingham is the perfect guy to bring in. Now at 8, we have the San Antonio Spurs, and this one just makes too much sense. He's the best player on the board. He's the best passer on the board, which is exactly what the Spurs need to feed Victor Obanyama, to feed um, Kelvin Johnson maybe on the team next year, but Devin Vassell, um, Jeremy Sohan not exactly scoring much, but between Devin Vassell, Victor Wet Bananas, and Zachary Reese's Shea, they need somebody to pass the rock, and that is going to be Nikola Topic from overseas, 6'7", a little over 200 pounds, and probably the best pure passer in this draft um i really like him a lot and i love that fit with him going to the spurs now at nine we have the oklahoma city thunder uh another team that you know they could go best player available but i think this is a team that's looking to win now and i think they're going to go out and get another winning player which is what they have been doing here as of late and that's going to be kevin mcculler in this case um mcculler six foot seven he scores it very well, 19 a game, 6.5 rebounds, 4.5 assists, pretty good efficiency. I really like McCullough's game, you know, on the offensive and defensive side of the ball, three-level score, and will strap you up. So he's going to be pretty good in Oklahoma City if he does end up there. Now at 10, we have the Atlanta Hawks, and this is a team that, yes, they need some shooting, but they also need some defense. They need a little bit of scoring. Uh, Matas Buzelas has fallen. I probably butchered that. He's fallen all the way down the board here, but with this pick, we're going to have the Hawks go out and get Devin Carter. Probably the best defender left on the board. Antonio Reeves is here, but you could make a little bit of trade down. We have two really good shooters. Uh, Reed Shepard's actually a really good defender. But, well, to be honest, we'll go Reed. No, no, no. We're going to keep going with Devin Carter. Reed Shepard, good defender, but I think Devin Carter is superior. Averages about two steals a game. Um, to go along with some really, really good numbers on the offensive side of the ball, single-handedly trying to carry the Providence Friars into the tournament. Um, and so we'll take the six foot three, six four uh, kind of combo guard out of Providence there to come in and fit along. I don't know if Bogdan's going to be there for much longer. Don't really know the current. Uh, same thing with DeJounte Murray. Don't know the status of the Hawks going forward, but Devin Carter, I think, is just a winning player. Now at 11, we have the OKC Thunder, and they're going to go out and get Reed Shepard now, who can really shoot it, and another guy that they can add to the bench, they can play defense, he can score, he can shoot, he can pass, he can do whatever, really. He kind of plays point guard for the um, Kentucky Wildcats coming off the bench, you know, at times, but they also bring um, Rob Dillingham off the bench. So Reed Shepard, projected as some people's number one overall pick, I think he's really good, and I think he would fit in great with the Thunder. All right, with the Chicago Bulls here at 12, maybe they do go Jerry McCain, but this is a Bulls team that I think will be hitting the reset button before long. DeMar DeRozan will be gone soon. Uh, Vucevic has two years left on his deal after this year, which honestly wouldn't be surprised if they go ahead and move on from him. Same thing with Zach Levine. They were close to just blowing it up at the deadline. Wouldn't be shocked to see him do it this offseason. So they're going to go with the best player on the board who is a bit of a project, but he's got the highest potential by far, and that is Matas Buzelis out of the G League Ignite. 6'10", 208, does a little bit of everything, uh, and I had him at number 9 on my big board. Now we have the New Orleans Pelicans on the clock, and they're going to go out and get another winning player. This is from the LA Lakers 
pick, and it's going to be Jared McCain, a guy that can come in, take some of the weight off C.J. McCollum from the scoring aspect of things. Jordan Hawkins is doing that a little bit, but imagine a backcourt with Jared McCain and Jordan Hawkins. I mean, that is that is going to be tough to stop shooting the ball wise um so jared is going to come in he can play defense too he's proven that he can facilitate he can score uh like jared a lot 14 a game five rebounds good efficiency um solid height weight he'll probably have to play point guard at the next level but you know that's what the pelicans will draft him to do they got dyson daniels uh, if they are getting beat on the defensive end now with the 14th overall pick we get the blazers back on the clock and i'm gonna have them go out and get another wing that can really score it but he can also defend and that is going to be antonio reeves who can fit right in here yes they have matisse thibel um shade and sharp but he's going to fit right in here at this three maybe the four spot some uh, he's only six six though uh so that is who we're going to take with the 14th overall pick the final pick of the lottery and he's averaging over 20 or he's averaging right at 20 points a game so this is the final march pre-march madness mock draft let me know your thoughts from now on after this video from saturday the 16th until wednesday i don't know what date that is but it's the day before the march madness game start It'll be strictly March Madness content, so if you're here for that, make sure to hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell. If you're here for the mock draft videos, do the same thing because you know once March Madness is over, we're going to pick it up more and more into the NBA draft. So yeah, with that being said, hit the like button, leave me a comment down below, and hit that subscribe button. And thank you so much for watching today's video.